super thin. Don't you ever hear anything going on in my room? No. Just complete and total silence. <laughs> that one hurt. <laughs> You're a model, aren't you? Excuse me? I can tell the way you wear your own skin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not a model. Did I amuse you? Well, it's just that that's the line I usually use. <laughs> I want you to pose for me. And then I follow it with that one. No, I'm Ariel, and I am an artist. Well, yeah, how do you do? I'm a sculptor. I make casts of the body. I'd like to make one of you. You see, with my work, I try to represent life or the absence of life. For when we are not present, that is when our presence is truly felt. <laughs> see, now that is good. I never would have gone there. <laughs> Dusk to dusk Don't know where we're going Doesn't matter anyway Anywhere that we go You may want to follow us When we go Where the day takes you it off. It's just your mother. The centerpiece is fine. Well, I just want everything to be perfect. I haven't seen her in nearly two years. So, tell me everything. What's she like? What am I in for? Oh, she's really something. She travels a lot. She's lived all over the world. She's been married seven times. She speaks four languages. Oh, and she was the international Mahjong champion for 1987. <laughs> Mahjong? Yeah. Now it all makes sense, by all means. But I think you really like her. She's a lot of fun. Max, haven't you ever been just a little bitter that your mom left you and your dad when you were so young? Not at all. I figure it would have been a lot worse if she had stayed in an unhappy marriage. Mm, maybe. Besides, this way she's racked with so much guilt, she buys me expensive gifts to compensate. <laughs> Well, work that guilt, girl. We need a big screen TV. <laughs> Magpie! Mom! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Stitches, sweetie, stitches. I had a little work done in New York. Be gentle. <gasps> <gasps> you had more plastic surgery? Well, darling, I was alone in Manhattan. What's a girl to do? I shopped and had my neck done. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Mom, this is Jess. Oh, Jess. I've heard so much about you. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Reynolds, Baker, Troy, Gonzalez, Burton, Burton, Shale. <laughs> and soon to be Mrs. Jules Lefebvre. Mom's getting married again. Oh, yes, in fact. I brought a picture of Juju. Oh, great. <laughs> it's the first time I've actually seen him. <laughs> oh. Ah, isn't he gorgeous? He's kind of young, isn't he? Uh -huh. What makes you say that? Well, he's wearing a cap and gown. <laughs> now, he teaches in a cooking school outside Paris, and that was graduation day. <laughs> he looks very nice. I'm really happy for you. Thank you, darling. <laughs> and you haven't even heard the best part yet. I was going to save it until dinner, but I can't. I can't hold it in any longer. <laughs> what? What is it? Jules and I uh -huh. are going to have a baby. <laughs> Wow, really, that's great. You don't seem as excited as I hoped you'd be. Well, aren't you kind of, uh, you know, well, I think what Magpie is trying to say is, well, she's your daughter and she's 26, so you must be... 35. <laughs> I can't believe this. I, I can't believe I'm actually going to have a little brother or sister. Yeah. This is so weird. <laughs> I mean, by the time the baby's my age, I'll be 52 and you'll be 35. <laughs> Ooh. So Ariel covers me in wet plaster, and then I have to remain very still. 
I'm telling you, this modeling is hard work. Boy, the things you'll go through to sleep with a woman. <laughs> I'm not sleeping with her. It is a purely professional relationship, okay? Oh, please, Randy, you've never done anything unless sex was involved. It's a given. That is not true. Uh huh. Hey, what's that? I was just telling Paul here that Ariel is going to immortalize me in a statue. She says I have the physique of a warrior, the profile of a scholar. Oh, well, wear a condom. <laughs> it is not about sex. I will prove it to you guys. She is having the opening of her exhibition this Saturday, and I want everyone to come. All right, all right, I'll come. So what about this statue? Is this going to be any good? Well, I don't know. She won't let me see it yet, although I'm a little worried. She says she's sculpting me in the style of Rodin. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I mean, Rodin was one of the greatest sculptors who ever lived. Oh, what a relief. I thought she meant that flying lizard that fought with Godzilla. <laughs> Lenora? Oh, Captain Parker, hello. <laughs> I've been thinking about what happened between us at the Christmas party. So have I, Rex. Since we kissed, I haven't been able to think of much else. I know. Me too. Lenore, there's something I have to tell you. What is it, Rex? <laughs> oh, Rex, you devil. Lenora, I, I want to apologize for my behavior. One minute we were, we were talking under the mistletoe, and the next my tongue had entered your mouth at the speed of light. <laughs> that shouldn't have happened. Rex, come on. It was just one little kiss. We're both adults. We're in a position of leadership, Lenora. It was inappropriate behavior. I see. It was tasteless and, frankly, a little vulgar. I understand. It was dirty and wrong. All right. <laughs> Not that I didn't feel feelings. You did feel feelings? Yes, but it doesn't matter. Romance in the workplace can only lead to trouble. But no one has to know. It can just be our little secret, totally separated from our jobs. We can... So, the rumor is you two are doing the big nasty. <laughs> oh, I'm exhausted. I don't think I've ever stopped that many hours in one day. Oh, we need to build up your endurance. Tomorrow we go cross-training. Neiman to Tiffany's, that's to Armani. Oh, Jules is going to go crazy over this. <laughs> it is sexy. Speaking of, how's your love life, darling? Oh, the usual. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Mom, I'm very selective. I don't just sleep around. Well, let me pass along a little bit of advice that my mother gave me. Why should a man buy the cow if the cow's no fun? <laughs> you know, Mom, you're probably not going to be able to wear this till after you've had the baby. Maggie, I've been meaning to talk to you about the baby. Oh, Mom, if this is about how I reacted when you first told me, I'm sorry. I admit I was a little stunned at first, but honest, I'm thrilled that you're pregnant. Oh, well, it's funny you should mention that because, you see, the truth is, I'm not pregnant yet. <laughs> you're not? No. Uh, the doctor said that I couldn't get pregnant because I'd stopped ovulating, which surprised me because I'm only 35. 35. Yes, I know. Go on. <laughs> But anyway, Jules and I really wanted to have another baby. So we went to this other doctor who said that he could take an egg, fertilize it, and then implant it into my uterus, and I could carry the baby to term. Wow. Mm -hmm. The only hitch is I need an egg donor. Is that going to be difficult? Well, that depends. How would you feel about giving me a couple of yours? <laughs> Okay, that's it. You call the 
orphanage. It's number three on the speed dial. Tonight, 7.30. How'd you like to be my date at the Victory Golf and Country Club tonight? Right, like I'm going to go to some club where they won't let me play shirtless. Grace attends a posh party. If I see a drunken Kennedy there, I won't be going home with you, Russell. Quentin returns home. You're grounded. I missed you. Give me a hug. All new. Just be yourself. You could pull a muscle trying to come up with a personality in one day. Grace on the fire tonight, 7.30 on 3. Forget those tweezers, forget that awful pain, and forget unsightly hair forever. Introducing IGEA, the revolutionary new system that removes unwanted hair permanently and painlessly. You've read about this exciting new European technology in leading magazines, and now it can be yours. I used to shave my bikini line every week. For 10 months ago, I tried IGEA, and I haven't had to shave since. It's wonderful. There's no burning wax, no plucking your eyebrows forever, no spending a fortune on professional electrolysis, and no hair growing back. IGEA deadens the hair right down past the root. The hair slides out easily and painlessly and never comes back. Look, shaving just cuts the hair off at the surface. It's back in days. Waxing rips it out painfully, and it still grows back. But IGEA sends a painless electrolytic pulse through the hair and root to the very cell that causes it to grow. The hair is released and never grows again. I was always removing these ugly stray hairs. They just kept coming back. But since I've used IGEA, they've been gone forever. The IGEA hair removal system comes complete with a special cleansing gel and soothing skin lotion. They're both imported from Europe. Don't live with unsightly hair. Order your IGEA. As each hair follicle may contain up to three hairs, at most it will just take three easy applications to rid yourself of unwanted hair forever. How good is IGEA? If your unwanted hair grows back in a week, in a month, in a year, return IGEA for a complete refund. Don't put up with unsightly hair. Order your IGEA system now for just four easy monthly payments of only $44.95. The IGEA system from LV Martin & Son is guaranteed. If your hair grows back in a week, a month or even a year, you can return your IGEA for a no questions asked refund. So call now for your IGEA. Andy, those breakfasts are for the passengers. It's a leftover. These steak and eggs are high in protein. I figure if I'm going to let Ariel sculpt me, I better bulk up and get my body into tip-tap shape. Well, just think, if you get big enough, maybe you'll finally beat that darn Godzilla. <laughs> Shut up. Maggie, what's wrong? Uh, uh, nothing. I'm sorry. I just have a lot on my mind. What's up? Well, for one thing, I'm trying to decide if I should check myself into a hospital. Why? What? What's wrong? You okay? Oh, no, no. Everything's fine. It, it just, it turns out my mother isn't pregnant after all. She's not? No. Seems she stopped ovulating, and the only way for her to have a baby is for someone, namely me, to give her an egg. What? And the doctor will fertilize it and plant it in her womb where it will grow into a full-fledged fetus. So what are you going to do? I don't know. This whole thing has been such a shock. I just need time to think. Wow. Gosh, I hope Maggie doesn't rush into this. There are a lot of things to think about, not the least of which is what will her relationship to that child be? Yeah. I mean, technically, she'd be the baby's mother and sister. <laughs> what? Now, I read somewhere it's now medically possible for one woman to be simultaneously fertilized by the sperm of two different men. So, you've got fraternal twins given birth on the same day by the same mother who have two separate fathers. Huh? I wonder if they could take the twin embryos and implant them into the mother's mother, producing fraternal twins that have different fathers, conceived by the mother but given birth by the grandmother. Yes, making the grandfather's daughter the aunt and stop mother. Stop it, stop it, my brain's about to explode. <laughs> oh, please, you're from the South. You should be a whiz at this. Wow. Pretty impressive group. Yeah, Ariel said there'd be three art critics here and a curator from the modern in New York. <sighs> Gotta admit, Randy, this is kind of cool. Never thought I'd be standing here in an art gallery, but 
here I am on a Saturday night, mingling with the elite of Miami, surrounded by all these paintings and statues. You only have to stay ten more minutes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Nora. Rex. Surprised to see you here. I came because Randy invited everyone at Regency. What were you thinking? This is dangerous, Lenora. People are talking. So let them talk. We're just friends. That's all. Friends. Fine. We're friends. So, what do you think of this piece? I think it's interesting. I like the attention to detail, the angularity, the eroticism. Yes, she's a vibrant, passionate woman, and he's a man with overpowering needs. She's throbbing for his touch? He wants her so bad he can taste it. She thinks she saw a broom closet near the entrance. He'll meet her there in two minutes. So, Maggie, have you thought about what I asked you yesterday? Oh, Mom, not here. But it's just you've been so quiet since I brought this whole thing up. I know, I'm sorry, Mom, but uh, I've thought about it. This egg thing makes me really uncomfortable. But I'm counting on you. I know. I'm just not sure I can do it. I mean, look at it this way. It's not just your child, it'd be my child, too. But that's what makes it wonderful. No, that's what makes it weird. <laughs> I mean, have you thought about what it'll be like at Thanksgiving or Christmas? I'll be sitting across the dinner table from someone who's my child. And then at the end of the night, I'm supposed to just get up, say goodbye, and walk out the door. I mean, how could I do that? Oh, right. How could any woman walk out the door and leave her child? Isn't that what you're really asking? What? Oh, Maggie, let's be honest. This isn't about the baby, is it? This is about you and me. After all these years, you're still angry that I walked out on you and your father. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, well, I knew somehow that this would come up. And I suppose I deserve it. But... Okay, everyone, gather round. I'm about to unveil my newest work. <laughs> you guys, I am so excited. I mean, imagine if the statue is good. Who knows? It could end up in a museum or something. Then long after I'm gone, there will be a piece of me that lives on forever. But first, I'd like to introduce my muse, Randy Anderson. Hey. Who so graciously gave of his time and his talent as my model, all for the sake of art. <laughs> Um, when you were hoping a, a piece of you lived on, was this the piece you had in mind? <laughs> what is that? It's you. Wait. You did a cast of my entire body, and all you used was my butt? Well, it is one of your best features. <laughs> you had. Touch it. Don't mind if I do. Ariel... You told me this work would be meaningful. Now, this I love. This butt speaks to me. No, no, it doesn't. My butt doesn't talk to nobody. Now, this is not art. And who are you to say what art is? Art is supposed to make you feel something. I feel something. I can't believe you did this to me. I can't believe I spent all that time with you, and all you used was my butt. Oh, I didn't use just your butt. What do you mean? Wow. Oh. Excuse me, is this to scale? <laughs> Matt, would you stop playing a footsie with me? I want to cuddle. I'm only letting you sleep here because of the construction in your apartment. Now, I'll promise Maggie we wouldn't do anything that would embarrass her while her mother's here. What? I told you I just want to cuddle. Huh. When did it ever stop there? I know you. You can't fool me. What? Oh, no? Well, what would you say if I told you they finished working on my apartment two days ago? What? <laughs> Ooh, I knew it was. Okay. You took advantage of my good nature just so you could get a little action. Uh, I really just wanted to cuddle. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then what are you wearing under there? Um, 
Nothing. Man, <laughs> Edwards, look, I'm going to get some water, and when I get back, you better have your underwear on or else. <laughs> Maggie! Where's Jess? I've got to talk to her. She stepped out for a second. Something wrong? Well, I've got to talk to somebody. My mom's being unreasonable. For some reason, she thinks I resent her for walking out on me when I was a child. And now she's convinced I'm trying to get back at her for it. And it's not true. Well, why would she think that? Because I told her I wouldn't give her any of my eggs. Oh. <laughs> why won't you give her any of your eggs? <laughs> Mac, think about it. What would you do if your mother came knocking at your door asking for your eggs? What would you say? Say you know where they are, reach in and take what you need. <laughs> Mom, what are you doing up? I thought you were asleep. Well, I was till I heard you talking to Mac. These walls are paper thin. By the way, have you put on your underwear yet? I'm not going to talk about my eggs anymore. Yeah, well, I have to discuss this. If that's all you want, Jess has some eggs, and I'm sure she'd be more than happy to share. Excuse me? Look, I think she's got the brown kind, but hey, an egg's an egg, right? <laughs> Mac, we're talking about a human egg. You know, the kind's in an ovary that turns into a baby. Oh. <laughs> See, I was talking about the kind that turns in to a McMuffin. Did you really mean it when you told Mac that you didn't resent me for walking out? Of course, I love you. Any resentment I had, I dealt with a long time ago, honest. I guess the reason that I got so upset is because part of me thinks that you have every right to be bitter. Oh, Mama. Maggie, you have to believe me. The greatest regret of my life was not getting to watch you grow up. I know, and that's why I'm so excited that you're going to try to have another baby. I want you to experience that. I just can't be the one to give you the egg. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I understand. Do you think you have a problem finding another donor? <sighs> I hope not. If all else fails, my cleaning lady wants to raise. Maybe we can work something out. <laughs> oh, Mac, you're very sweet to sit through this. Well... Really they didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> hey, lady. Now, I don't care where you get your eggs, but you got to get your sperm somewhere else. Tempting taste of Griffin.